Am I the asshole for refusing to order food so I didn't have to split the bill? I've been part of a tight-knit friend group since college. We're a close bunch, and over the years, we've shared countless memories together. There are eight of us, and we've celebrated birthdays, crammed for finals, partied through college, and grown through early adulthood side by side. Through breakups, new jobs, moves, and everything in between, we've all been there for each other. But in every group, there are a couple of members who complicate things, and for us, that's been Connor and Maya. Somehow, they always find a way to turn our outings into a financial headache. It all started back in college. Whenever we'd go out for a meal, most of us would order reasonably, sticking to our budgets. But not Connor and Maya. They'd always pick the priciest options. Gourmet entrees, top shelf drinks, and desserts galore. And when the bill arrived, it was as if they had suddenly developed amnesia about bringing their wallets. Connor would pat his pockets and say, oh, I must have left my card at home. And Maya would chime in with, can someone spot me? I'm waiting for my paycheck to come through. At first, we were sympathetic. We were all broke college students, after all. But even after we graduated and started working, their habits didn't change. One memory still burns bright. During a group trip to the beach, we decided to have dinner at a nice seafood restaurant. The rest of us ordered simple meals, aware of our budgets, but Connor and Maya, they went all out. Lobster, champagne, dessert, the works. When the bill arrived, Connor claimed his card wouldn't swipe, and Maya said she had to pay for an unexpected expense earlier. Once again, we chipped in to cover their lavish tastes, thinking it was a one-time thing, but it never was. This became a pattern. Over the years, there were endless repeats. One night at Jenna's birthday dinner, Connor ordered a bottle of expensive wine, then ducked out early, leaving us with the bill. Another time, at a trendy new sushi spot, Maya claimed she was short on cash after ordering enough food to feed a family. Each time there was an excuse, and each time we ended up paying more than our share. This wasn't a college quirk anymore. It was clear they were taking advantage. Last weekend, Ethan, one of the guys in our group, told me about a casual dinner everyone was planning. Ethan's a good friend and usually the peacekeeper, so I told him honestly that if Connor and Maya were coming, I'd rather skip it. Ethan, always the optimist, tried to convince me to come anyway, saying it would be a good chance to put our differences aside for once. After some persuasion, I agreed, but I had a plan. We all met at a nice restaurant and the mood was lively from the start. Everyone went around ordering and most people chose dishes around $40, a fair amount for a nice dinner out. But when it was Connor and Maya's turn, they didn't hold back. Each of them ordered entrees that cost nearly $100, rattling off additional sides and cocktails without a second thought. I felt my frustration rising. When it was my turn to order, I just pointed to a $4 beer on the menu and handed it back. Ethan looked at me, confused, and asked why I wasn't ordering food. I shrugged, saying I'd lost my appetite. Two other friends, sensing what I was doing, followed suit and only ordered drinks. The vibe grew awkward, but I didn't care. I was done playing this game. When the food arrived, I watched Connor and Maya dig into their fancy meals, sipping my beer and feeling a small sense of satisfaction. The check eventually came and true to form, Connor suggested we split it evenly. I cut him off, saying the bill should only be split among those who ordered food. He looked shocked, arguing that we'd always split the bill equally. I reminded him that things were different this time since three of us only had drinks. Ethan looked like he'd been smacked with a dose of reality. He had ordered a modest meal, and yet he was now looking at a bill far higher than what he'd spent. I left $10 on the table for my beer, said my goodbyes, and walked out, leaving a mix of confused and frustrated faces behind. The next morning, my phone exploded with angry messages from Connor and Maya. They called me selfish, cheap, and even petty for not ordering food, which forced them to pay more than they expected, I laughed feeling the irony. They were upset about paying for their own extravagance. Ethan also messaged me, saying he was disappointed and felt I could have simply skipped the dinner rather than make a scene by ordering only a drink. I felt a twinge of guilt. Ethan's a good friend and he meant well, but I also believed he needed to see Connor and Maya for who they were, users. To give some context where I live in Australia, Restaurants don't typically split checks, and tipping isn't as big as it is in the States. 
Ethan could have easily asked Connor and Maya to transfer him the money, but he's always had a soft spot for them, even though it's clear they're just exploiting his kindness. I admit my approach was a bit petty, but I was exhausted from constantly subsidizing their expensive habits. If Ethan wants to keep helping them, that's his choice, but I'm done with it. Despite the tension, Ethan and I remain friends. He's a good guy, but he's been blind to Connor and Maya's freeloading for years. I hope this experience opened his eyes a bit, but only time will tell. For now, I'm standing my ground. If they want to eat like kings, they can pay like it too. No more free rides on my account. Not long after, another opportunity to reinforce my stance presented itself. Tara's birthday was coming up, and she planned a weekend getaway at a cabin in the mountains. I knew Connor and Maya would be there, but I saw this as a chance to reinforce my point. We carpooled to the cabin, and from the start, things went smoothly. The first night, we grilled burgers, shared drinks, and played board games. But on the second day, the familiar freeloading habits started creeping back. We went on a group grocery run with everyone contributing a set amount to cover basic supplies, breakfast items, snacks, drinks, and ingredients for a BBQ feast on the final night. However, as we shopped, I noticed Connor and Maya sneaking in pricey items, premium steak, gourmet cheeses, fancy chocolates, and top shelf liquor. I decided to let it go at the moment, but I kept track mentally. Back at the cabin, everyone pitched in to help prepare dinner and we had a great meal. But as the night wore on, Connor and Maya gravitated toward the premium items they'd added, encouraging others to try the special foods they'd picked out. When it came time to split the grocery bill, they again suggested an even split. This time, I had my notes ready. I pointed out that certain luxury items hadn't been agreed upon by everyone and should be covered by those who added them. Maya claimed it was all part of the group experience, but the rest of us were fed up. I insisted and the group backed me. Reluctantly, they paid up, though their resentment was palpable. On the drive home, Ethan and I had a long conversation. He admitted he'd overlooked Connor and Maya's behavior for too long and thanked me for finally bringing it to light. It felt good knowing he was starting to see things more clearly. Months later, we planned a day trip to an amusement park. I knew Connor and Maya would likely pull something and sure enough, they veered toward the priciest attractions and food stalls. When it came time for lunch, they suggested a fancy sit-down restaurant, while the rest of us wanted the affordable food trucks. I suggested we split up and meet afterward. Predictably, they went to the restaurant while we enjoyed street food. Later, they downplayed their expensive meal, but the group had wised up. As we left the park, Connor casually mentioned the cost of tickets and food, suggesting we pool remaining cash to cover any extra expenses. I reminded him that everyone should handle their own costs, and the group agreed. He dropped the subject. Our gatherings became less frequent after that, and the dynamic shifted. Connor and Maya gradually grew more mindful, realizing the group wasn't willing to keep covering for them. Over time, our meetups became more about quality time than extravagant spending. Connor and Maya's freeloading habits became a distant memory, and our friendships grew stronger. Looking back, I have no regrets. Standing my ground was necessary to protect our friendships and set boundaries. If I hadn't, the resentment might have torn us apart. Today, our gatherings are less about spending and more about genuine connection. Those difficult conversations ultimately led to stronger, healthier friendships. And for that, I'm grateful. Commentary time. This story really sheds light on how important it is to set boundaries, even within long-standing friendships. It's remarkable how one or two individuals like Connor and Maya can subtly shift a group dynamic to the point where everyone ends up feeling taken advantage of. These kinds of freeloading habits can go unnoticed for a long time because close friends often feel uncomfortable addressing financial matters, fearing it may create unnecessary tension. But OP's decision to finally put their foot down led to a necessary reality check, allowing the group to reassess what they value in their friendships. What's striking here is the toll that constantly covering someone else's expenses can take. Over time, it builds up resentment and can even strain good friendships. Like with Ethan, who felt caught between supporting OP's stance and maintaining group harmony. It's a common experience in many friend groups, where everyone is willing to pitch in now and then, but struggles when it becomes a pattern for certain people to take advantage. 
OP's move to pay only for what they ordered was a bold yet effective way to drive the point home. It allowed the group to see just how much Connor and Maya were overspending at the expense of others and created a shift where everyone started standing up for fairness. By bringing these behaviors to light, OP not only preserved the quality of their friendships, but also taught a valuable lesson about shared responsibility and respect. Have you ever faced a similar situation with a friend who expected others to cover for them? How did you handle it? Share your experiences or advice in the comments below. If you enjoyed this story, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell for more content about navigating friendships and life's tricky situations. Let's build a community where we can all support each other in making healthy boundaries.